to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. The Indian banking sector is a multi-trillion rupee industry today. But few realize that the origins of India's vibrant banking industry lie in the Swadeshi wave that swept the country following the partition of Bengal in 1905. The Central Bank of India, Bank of Baroda, Bank of India, Canara Bank, South Indian Bank and many prominent banks in India today date back to this period. Indians have been banking till as late as the early 20th century. It was the Hundi or the Bill of Exchange which was the most prevalent form of credit across India. Traditional Indian banking began to change in the late 18th century as trade and commerce picked up under the British East India Company. The country could no longer function without modern banks. The first modern bank in India was the Bank of Hindustan. It was set up in 1770 by a British company named Alexander and Company, but it shut down in 1832. The British East India Company also set up one bank each in their three presidencies between 1809 and 1843, which were the Bank of Bombay, the Bank of Madras, and the Bank of Bengal. These presidency banks were controlled by the government and would merge in 1921 to form the Imperial Bank of India, which after 1955 would be known as the State Bank of India. Interestingly, it was the American Civil War that led to the first wave of modern banking in India. Due to the war, the cotton trade between England and America was disrupted, leading to a boom in Indian cotton exports. The huge fortunes made during this time led to the sudden mushrooming of banks with as many as 25 banks and 39 financial associations being established between 1863 and 1865. But almost all of them collapsed which led to a loss of confidence among Indians in modern banking. Till 2020, before its merger with the Indian bank, the Allahabad Bank was the oldest surviving bank in India. It was established in 1865. But India's first and oldest Swadeshi Bank, started with Indian capital and run by Indians, was the Punjab National Bank, which survives to this day. The Punjab National Bank was established by a group of prominent Indians that included Sardar Dyal Singh Manjitya and Lala Harkishan Lal, in 1894 in Lahore. Lala Lajpat Rai was the first person to open an account with the Punjab National Bank. It was the partition of Bengal in 1905 on orders of the British Governor General Lord Curzon that spurred the second wave of banking in India. The Swadeshi movement, a move among Indians to give Indian industry a boost, called for Swadeshi banks to fund Swadeshi enterprises. And the response was overwhelming. By 1913, there were as many as 451 banking companies established across India. Some of the most notable among them were the Bank of India, Canara Bank, the Central Bank of India and the Bank of Baroda. This second wave of Indian banking was also fueled by the prosperity generated by the boom in agricultural exports during the early 1900s. In the princely state of Baroda, its visionary ruler Maharaja Sayajirao Gayakwad had seen how ruthless moneylenders had exploited farmers and small traders. He established the Bank of Baroda in 1908 to provide institutional credit for his subjects. One of the most notable names in the Indian banking sector is that of Saurabhji Poch Khanwala, a humble banking clerk who went on to establish the Central Bank of India in 1911. Sir Pirosh Shah Mehta 
was the first chairman of the bank. Influenced by the Swadeshi movement, a large number of banks were also established in the Uttar and Dakshin Kannada districts of Karnataka, the most prominent being the Kannada Bank and the Corporation Bank. But after the boom came a fall. Between 1913 and 1918, as many as 94 banking institutions failed. Sadly, the most common reason was fraud. In the absence of banking regulations, the bank directors frequently siphoned off money, leading to a bank's collapse. The years between the First and the Second World War would again see a boom in Indian banking, although not many new banks were set up during this period. The Reserve Bank of India was established in 1935 as India's central bank. Following India's independence in 1947, the banking sector saw a period of consolidation and nationalization. It was only with the liberalization of the Indian economy in 1990s that a new wave of Indian banking would emerge, with banks such as ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank and many others being set up. Although private players have transformed the Indian banking in the last few decades, it was undoubtedly the Swadeshi wave of Indian banks that played an important role in the making of modern India. They created a foundation that continues to power India's financial services sector in the 21st century.